Now, oxygen is very important for people with dyspnea. One of the common disorders we see with uh, needing oxygen are people with COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, this disease is a group of different diagnoses. Uh, things like um, uh, emphysema is part of COPD. Um, the little sacs, the areoles, um, on the end of the bronchi um, are where the oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchange. Well, these sacs become rigid and not as much oxygen and carbon dioxide can exchange. And so it causes them to have dyspnea. Now, it's important when people have COPD that they are not having their oxygen more than two liters per nasal cannula. And the reason is because it actually does the opposite. If we have the oxygen too high on people with uh, COPD, it will actually cause their respirations to be suppressed. So it's important that we're watching that. Now, when um, you have somebody on oxygen with a mask, it's also important that we have that at five to six liters. You cannot put a resident on an oxygen mask at one, two liters. They will suffocate because they're going to just continually breathe their own carbon dioxide back in because there's not enough oxygen to clear the, the carbon dioxide out of the mask. It's very important that we don't do that. Now, it's important that you are familiar, I was going to show you, with your facility's equipment. This is a oxygen um, that you would see like in a hospital um, and it goes into the wall which is connected to the oxygen supply for the hospital, the oxygen tank. And then um, the, the two main hooks here and you move this to change the flow of the oxygen. It also has a ball. Remember the level of the oxygen is the center where that ball floats is where the level is at. Now, um, people can get too much oxygen and we call it oxygen toxicity. We actually see things like difficulty breathing. If they have too much oxygen, right? Uh, their nail beds can turn purple. Um, they may be confused. They may sleep more. So we really need to make sure we're watching oxygen. Now, residents are notorious for changing their oxygen levels. Just do a quick check when you're check in there and know what level it should be at and make sure it's at that level. If you find that it's at a different level, talk to the nurse. Say, hey, did Joe's oxygen level get changed? It's up to three and it's always been two. And she can tell you if there's been a change in the doctor's order. Um, the other thing is sometimes people will get really worked up because they don't think they're getting oxygen and they're having severe apnea or, or um, feel like the, or severe dyspnea. You need to check your tubing. We use a lot of connectors so that they can walk to the bathroom or walk around their room and sometimes those connectors will come undone. I, I always hold it on my cheek to feel the oxygen coming out before I put it on the patient or the resident. Um, one class I was doing the demo and I'm like doing that and I can't, I can't feel oxygen and I'm like, what the heck? And I look down, yeah, my tubing wasn't connected to the machine and that's why I wasn't feeling any oxygen coming out of the concentrator. So make sure you're checking the tubing, make sure it's plugged in, make sure it's at the right level, uh, make sure it's turned on, make sure the tank's not empty. These are things that sometimes we just turn it, you know, put them on, put it on their face and leave. Well, doesn't work very well if it's not turned on. Um, the other thing is a way to check to see and kind of show the resident that the oxygen is coming out of the tubing is have a clean glass of water, put the nasal cannula in it, and it will bubble, right? And that shows them there is oxygen coming out. And just showing that them that sometimes helps calm down some anxiety, encourage them to take some deep breaths, through their nose and out their mouth. Also, raising that head of the bed, right? That's a big deal when people are short of breath. You don't wanna lay them flat, right? Um, make sure you follow your policies and procedures with oxygen and know that it's, it's very flammable. It's very combustible. We never crack the tank. You know that first when I said we open it with a key um, to clear out the dust and debris? We always wanna do that outside a residence room. We never want to do that in the room with the resident because what if it falls and goes through the wall or 
goes across. You want to see a funny video, go to YouTube and put oxygen tanks through walls. Terrible video of guys laying oxygen canisters on their sides and taking a sledgehammer, breaking off the heads, and it goes through the wall. That's how serious this is. All right, guys, when you come to clinicals, or I'm sorry, skills, make sure you mess with the oxygen tank and the concentrator.